so you want to go to Mars, huh? Well, this perilous journey can take anything between six and nine months. And the window of opportunity only opens up every two years. But how do we even know this? And how is it exactly done? Hey, Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. I hope you like algebra because this week's video is going to be a bit mathsy. We're going to calculate how to get to Mars. So let's start. Now, if you want to go to Mars or anywhere outside of our little bubble here, you may be thinking, why do we always take these super weird routes? Why not go directly there? There are many ways to get to Mars, but the one that you're probably most familiar with is the Hohmann transfer orbit. In terms of fuel consumption, this is the most efficient way to transfer between two orbits. And this is particularly important because currently it costs a few thousand dollars to send just one kilogram to space. It's so much money. When ExoMars 26 launched, carrying that mission that I worked on, Trace Gas Orbiter, but also the failed lander, Schiaparelli, the total launch mass was about 4,300 kilograms. But only 700 kilograms of that were the actual science instruments. So anyway, getting back to Mars, let's say that you have the sun here in the center and Earth in a circular orbit around the sun. We're going to put the Earth at zero degrees. So this means that if you draw an imaginary axis, an XY axis, the angle subtended from the X axis to a line through the Earth and the sun is zero degrees. Now, Mars is at a circular orbit with a larger radius, whereas the orbit of Earth has a radius of one AU or one astronomical unit, Mars's orbit has a radius of 1.5 AU around the Sun. Now, the Hohmann transfer orbit is an elliptical orbit that connects the orbits of Earth and Mars when Earth is at zero degrees and Mars is at 180 degrees. So when we bring back that x-axis, measuring the angle between the x-axis and Mars, this angle is 180 degrees. It's on the opposite side of Earth. Now, this is true of any two orbits of different sizes, not just Earth and Mars. And it's the orbit used not only to get to Mars, but also to get back to Earth in the most fuel efficient way. To use a home and transfer orbit to go to Mars, a spacecraft would first be launched into a low Earth orbit. Then the spacecraft would use its engines to accelerate to a speed that would put it on this home and transfer orbit trajectory. The spacecraft would then slowly coast along this trajectory until it reaches its destination, Mars. And once it reaches Mars, the spacecraft could then use its engines again to slow down and enter orbit around Mars. So now we know how we get to Mars, but how long does it take? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to calculate the semi-major axis of the home and transfer orbit. The semi-major axis is the average distance from a point on the ellipse to the center of the ellipse. In the context of the home and transfer orbit, the semi-major axis is the average distance between Earth and Mars. So the semi-major axis A is equal a half times the radius of Earth plus the radius of Mars, which equals a half of 1 AU plus 1.5 AU, which equals a half of 2.5 AU, which equals 1.25 AU. Now, Kepler's third law tells us the relationship between the orbital periods of planets and their average distance from the Sun. And this law tells us that the square of a planet's orbital period is directly proportional to the cubed of its semi-major axis. So mathematically, it's given as t squared is equal to k times a cubed, where t is the orbital period of the planet in years, i.e. the time it takes for it to make a full lap of the entire orbit. A is the semi-major axis of the orbit in astronomical units, AU, and K is a constant of proportionality that's the same for all planets in our solar system. We can calculate K from Earth's orbit, so let's do that first. 
The period of Earth's orbit is one year. It takes one year for the Earth to orbit the Sun. And its semi-major axis, its average distance to the Sun, is 1 AU. So to get k on its own, we divide both sides of the equation by a cubed. So this becomes k equals t squared divided by a cubed. Now let's plug in those numbers. Period t equals 1 and semi-major axis a equals 1. So k must equal to 1. Okay, so now we know what k is, we can then calculate the period of the Hohmann transfer orbit. So if t squared equals k times a cubed, where k is 1, and a we already calculated earlier to be 1.25 AU, so plugging in the numbers, the period is the group of 1 times 1.25 cubed. This comes out to be about 1.40 years, or about 511 days. But since the travel distance from Earth to Mars is only half of this orbital distance, it doesn't go all the way around, we can expect to get to Mars in this Hohmann transfer orbit in half of 511 days, which is about 256 days, or about 8.5 months. Perfect! But how do we know when we should launch? Well, Mars's orbital period, the time it takes to make a full orbit around the Sun, is 687 days. And that means that each day, Mars will move 360 degrees divided by 687 days, which is about 0 0.52 degrees per day. So after 256 days, remember this is half of the orbit, it would have moved 256 times 0 0.52 degrees, which is equal to 133 degrees. So in order for Mars to be exactly 180 degrees from Earth, when our spacecraft enters Mars's orbit, we need to make sure that it launches at 180 degrees minus the 133 degrees it would have moved through, which is 47 degrees. So this means that we need to launch when Mars is 47 degrees ahead of Earth in its orbit to ensure that Mars is there when the spacecraft arrives. Okay, now the last bit of the task, and maybe the most math heavy, so bear with me if you've gotten this far. If we missed our launch window, when exactly will the next time be for us to be able to launch again? So first of all, we need to know how fast Earth is moving. Earth is moving 360 degrees per year, which is 360 degrees divided by 365 days, which is equal to 0 0.99 degrees per day. That's how fast it's moving. The location of Earth at any given time is given by the equation E equals T times VE and minus 360Z, where E is the angle where Earth is, T is the time in days, VE is the speed of Earth in degrees per day, and the last term there, Z, is some arbitrary integer, because we know that at 360 degrees, you're already going back to the start, so it's the same as zero degrees. And so by subtracting 360, you can get like numbers only between 360 and zero, and not anything above that, because we know we start again. So I know this might seem a little bit intimidating, but really, I promise you it's not. Earth's location is how fast it's traveling times time. Remember, it's simply distance equals velocity times time. That's all I'm showing you here with a little bit of a correction term to make the numbers look pretty. Now, we have exactly the same equation for Mars. m equals t times vm minus 360y plus m0 where m is the location of Mars in degrees, t is the time in days again, vm is the orbital speed of Mars in degrees per day, and again we have some correction for the 360 degree loop, with y as the integer here now. But now we have an additional term of plus m0, and this is because Mars doesn't start off at 0 degrees, it starts off at 47 degrees ahead of Earth. To calculate when the next time Mars is at 47 degrees ahead of Earth, we simply subtract the two equations from each other. So m minus e equals t times vm minus 360y plus m0 minus t times ve and plus 360z. We can then do some tidying up, grouping the time together and those arbitrary integers z and y, and this becomes the following. 
And then finally, we could substitute in the numbers. We want Mars to be 47 degrees ahead of Earth, so M minus E has to be 47. And then we've got T times the subtraction of the velocities, um, the correction term, and then that initial starting point of Mars. And then we rearrange for T, so T equals minus 360x divided by the difference of the velocities of the two planets. And this gives us approximately 766x, where x here, by the way, is some arbitrary integer. We've just grouped those integers z and y together to get another integer x. So basically what this equation is telling us that any integer multiples of 766 days, this is when the next time we'll be able to launch to Mars. In other words, 766 days is about every two years. Wow, and guys, you've made it through all of my calculations and math. I hope you feel so proud of yourselves. I should mention that Earth and Mars's orbits aren't perfectly circular, so the values in these equations will change a little bit. Hence, when people ask how long it takes to Mars, its answer is usually six to nine months. But you get the idea here, and you should be able to calculate it yourself for any type of orbits now with those real numbers plugged in. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe. Fly with me to the stars Faster than light Soaring past my